when I click create a test, a pop-up window will come up. There are three ways you can create a test, three main ways, and we're going to go over those ways now. And those are build options. I can build a test randomly. In this way, we're choosing how many questions and of what type. For instance, 10 multiple choice and 5 true or false. The computer is deciding what questions are chosen. We're choosing how many and of what type. The second way to build a test is by choosing by criteria. Maybe it's by difficulty level, DOK level, Bloom's taxonomy, or even state standards. The third type to wait, uh, or way to build a test is to build an empty test. Here we have the most controls, and we're choosing the specific questions we want to be a part of this test. I'm going to build a test the first way, which is randomly first. I'm going to call this random test. It's asking me where do I want this to be housed. I want it to be housed in my test. That's the folder I want it to be located. And I'm ready to click Next. Which questions do I want to be a part of this test? Well, I want my biology test bank. And let's say I want questions from Chapter 7. I'm ready to click Next. Do I want English and Spanish? Mm, I'm just going to choose English for this one. Click Next. Now we have a breakdown of how many questions we have to choose from and of what type. How about a quick little 10 question multiple choice quiz? I'm ready to click Next. And this is what I've chosen. 10 multiple choice questions. When I click Finish, I have a test with 10 multiple choice questions. Now there are many questions that uh, can be chosen here. And I can have the ability to move these questions around. I can double click on any question and edit a question if I choose. If this is the test that I'd like to print out, I can go to File, Print to PDF, uh, make a single version or multiple versions. That's the easiest way to create a test. It's creating a test randomly. Let's go and create a test a different way. And I'm going to X out of this test. But that test will always exist. It doesn't mean I'm deleting it. Where did I house that test? I housed it in my test folder. And there it is. It's still there for me. The second way to create a test, if we remember, is creating a test by criterion. Let's choose that way. I'm going to call this criteria test. I want it also to be in the My Test folder, and I'm ready to click Next. What questions do I want to be a part of this test? Which banks? Again, I want biology. Uh, instead of question, Chapter 7, I'm going to choose Chapter 6 for this one. Click Next. I'll choose English for this one as well. Click Next. Now, how do I want, what type of questions do I want in here? I want to choose by difficulty level. So now I can choose questions by different levels of Bloom's taxonomy or depth of knowledge. So how about I choose five questions from DOK level three, and how about a good higher level DOK four question, and click update to both of them. So I have six questions. Here's my breakdown by DOK level. Click Finished. And now I have a test that has been created by DOK level. I call it my criteria test. I'm going to X out of this. Here's a pop quiz, qu quiz question. Does it still exist? Has it been deleted? That's correct. The answer is no, it has not. It still exists in my test folder down here at the left. And if I open up that folder, now I have the random test and the criteria test. We're going to create a test one last way. And that is by having the most control. The only option we haven't chosen is build an empty test. Let me do it that way. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, choice test. Because that's what we're doing. We're choosing the questions on the test. I also want it to be housed in the My Test folder. And when I click Finish, what I will have is a blank slate right here. Okay, I will have a blank slate. The first thing that you have to do when you create this test is to X out of it. And again, when you X out of a test, that test is still there. Even though we haven't put any questions in there, we've created that test uh, uh, format. And here it is. It's called the choice test. Even though it has no questions in it, it still exists. 
So I'm going to keep that folder open so you can see that choice test. Now what we're going to do is go to the test bank that we want to be a part of this test. I'm going to choose Chapter 5 this time. And I'm going to choose some banks from Chapter 5. And I'm going to drag them into this area, as the instructions tell me to do over here. And when I do, I have some questions that pop up. And notice in the upper right here, I have 1 through 10 showing, but I have up to 50 questions in this test bank. So let me take a look at questions 31 through 40. Many of them have graphics. They're already embedded in here. And once we have a choice test, all we have to do is take the test question that we want and drag it to the choice test. So I'm going to bring my cursor right over the choice test and drag it to my choice test, and now that will be a part of the test. If I want to go to different parts of the test bank, I can do that. So let's say I want to bring this multiple choice question here. I drag it to my choice test, drop it, and now it is part of my choice test. And when I open the choice test, notice I have two questions in there. I've dragged two questions into the bank. I like this question, so let me drag it into my choice test. Now I have three questions. I don't like question four or five, but boy, I do like question six. Let me drag it into my choice test. Now I have four questions there. We've created a test three different ways. We've created a test randomly. We've created a test by criterion. And we've created a test by choosing the questions in that test. Anytime we want to revisit a test to print it out, all we have to do is take one of those tests, whether it be the criteria, the random, or the choice, bring it over here to our working place, and now it's ready to be modified, printed, or edited in any way, shape, or form.